flag is definitely something that we need to be able to better understand so that we can definitely respond to it, especially when we're anticipating any type of travel. Now, one of the things I wanna make a comment about jet lag is that there is jet lag related to the actual travel, but there's also jet lag that we're seeing even more commonly that is termed social jet lag. Both of these are actually based in the same circadian science and pathology. What we're talking about here is that everyone has a circadian rhythm. This is your day-night rhythm. In fact, this is genetically programmed into your DNA. We recognize in 2017, a Nobel Prize went to three men who had identified and characterized the molecular capacity of clock genes, really telling us that our body is programmed to act on a certain circadian day-night pattern. When you look at an individual who's jumping on a plane and, and flying across multiple time zones, it is causing a forced malalignment between what your body's circadian rhythm is and then what your environmental circadian rhythm is. We see this becoming most problematic when people are flying eastbound. However, we can see this in either direction. There have been a variety of different attempts at trying to be able to modify the experience of jet lag. Why? Why should we even care? Well, because you're going to feel horrible when your body is trying to function in a time zone that it is not programmed to be functioning in. This is where people may experience things like either not being able to fall asleep because it really is morning time for them based on where they're from, or that they are falling asleep midday because of the fact that for them, this is where they should be sleeping or it's the middle of the night. We've seen the impacts of circadian rhythm disorders like jet lag in a variety of different ways. So number one, we've had the conversation in the past in regards to regularity of sleep and the monumental data that was published earlier this year that has demonstrated when we have irregular sleep-wake schedules, all hell breaks loose and our bodies are just at greater risk for really everything to go wrong. Well, we also see this just in a, in a regular capacity when you're talking about things that might be entertaining to you as a viewer, but maybe not so entertaining for the person who's going to be competing. What am I talking about? I'm talking about athletics. When we look at individuals who have flown across the country and now are expected to play a 7 p.m. baseball, football, you name the athletic sport, we always used to talk about the home team advantage thinking that it was actually the crowd in the stadium that is leading to them having a greater likelihood of the win. The reality is, is that this is not the truth at all. This is actually far from the truth. All right, maybe contributing just a little bit. But the reality is, is what it's representing is a circadian rhythm dysfunction. And so if I'm an athlete who is now expecting to play a 7 p.m. game, that it actually is aligned with my 10 or 11 p.m. self, me playing a sport at 2 a.m. in the middle of this game is really not the same as the home team advantage of playing it at actually an 8 or a 9 o'clock. And so when you're looking at teams that are traveling multiple time zones, their 40% likelihood of winning is not a result of just being the home team advantage. It is a result of the fact that they're trying to optimize their performance when they are not in an area that is most aligned with what they should be doing. They should be probably sleeping at that time. Are you a person who's a frequent business traveler? I know for myself, it is one of the things that is the hardest part of travel, especially if I'm going multiple time zones. And I know that I'm going to need to be on my best performance in order to be able to deliver a talk or conceptualize a new study or do whatever it is that I'm intending to do there. And this can also be for our leisurely travelers as well. I didn't spend all this money to get to the sandy beaches, not to be able to enjoy my time in the sand and be in my room fast asleep because I can't keep my eyes open. The reality is, is that the call to action is to definitely partner with a sleep physician because of the fact that there are strategies that can be employed that will help you have a better daytime function and night sleep. Once you, get, once you get to your destination. Some of these strategies are more well studied than others with much more evidence to be able to support their function. However, when looking at the constellation of different strategies that you can consider, some of them also have lower risk where even if the data isn't as impressive, 
may be worthwhile to try. What am I talking about? Well, there are some studies that have demonstrated things like melatonin, benzodiazepines, and benzodiazepine receptor agonists can be strategies that can be implemented when you are traveling multiple time zones to help you be able to better adjust to your new time zone. However, outside of medications, there are also other strategies that have been studied that gives a suggestion that may also help you to better adapt to the time zone that you're going to. This actually includes things like strategic exposure or lack of exposure to lighting, as well as strategic timing of the foods that you're taking in. There have been some studies that have demonstrated that even starting to utilize the feeding schedule or the meal time schedules of the destination that you're heading to can help you to better facilitate adaption to your new time zone. So although it can be a struggle to be on those long stretches of planes and them sending you all that yummy food that's on the airplane, of course, that is with complete sarcasm, it may be in your best interest to skip those meals. And unfortunately, sometimes to skip the wine as well, because it may help you to be able to land in a way that will be most well rested and ready to take advantage of what all the day has to offer at the location that you're heading to.